And hold your Bible up real high as we say this. But be very careful that you think about these uh, words that we say about this, which is the greatest gift that God has given to us uh, in this world. Uh, it is the only source of absolute truth that there is in this world, and we have it available to us every day. Here we go. This is the Bible. It is the Word of God. The Holy Spirit inspired it. Jesus authenticated it. God has protected it. This book is God's light for the pathways of my life. The Bible is like no other book in the world. It is the truth of God to change me and to mold me into the person that God wants me to be. Now as I study God's Word, I will open my heart, my mind, and my will to God and to the authority of this sacred book. I invite the Holy Spirit to speak to me through His Word, which is living and powerful. Uh, I have to say, I absolutely love to listen to uh, to the passion with which you say that affirmation. I am so very grateful to Yahweh, and I do thank him on a very, very regular basis, probably daily, uh, that I can be part of a church like this that believes the words of that affirmation uh, and wants to live it out in our church life and in our home lives. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, we are in the book of 2 Timothy. Chapter 4, and I am going to be reading verses 9 to the end of the chapter. Paul says, Be diligent to come to me quickly, for Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world, and has departed for Thessalonica. Crescens for Galatia, Titus for Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is useful to me for ministry. And Tychicus I have sent to Ephesus. Bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas when you come, and the books, especially the parchments. Alexander the coppersmith did me much harm. May the Lord repay him according to his works. You also must be aware of him, for he has greatly resisted our words. At my first defense, no one stood with me, but all forsook me. May it not be charged against them. But the Lord stood with me and strengthened me so that the message might be preached fully through me and that all the Gentiles might hear. Also, I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. And the Lord will deliver me from every evil work and preserve me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Greet Prisca and Aquila and the household of Onesiphorus. Erastus stayed in Corinth, but Trophimus I have left in Miletus sick. Do your utmost to come before winter. Eubulius greets you, as well as Pudens, Linus, Claudia, and all the brethren. The Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Grace be with you. Amen. Let's pray one more time as Pastor Terry comes to share the word with us this morning. Father, we love your word, and uh, we just ask that you would reveal by your Holy Spirit your message to us that you have prepared in the heart of Pastor Terry. I just pray that you'd give him grace and strength and provision as he continues to do what you've asked him to do. Thank you, Father, in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good to see you, brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you for being here. I'm thankful for every one of these times that we enjoy together now. It, uh, it always occurs to me now that each one of these is a precious opportunity to study the Word together, and we don't know how many more of these we are going to enjoy. 
I hope you have a copy of the bulletin with you. Um, <clears throat> I don't know how many of you read and follow Amir Sarfati's uh, telegram channel, but I believe that's where uh, it's going. that picture is going to be posted, right, uh, Larry? Yeah, that's where Rhonda will be posting that uh, picture of our church. <clears throat> I suspect that most of you know what the acronym MAGA stands for, right? M-A-G-A, -A. Make America Great Again. Uh, I believe it uh, has been Donald Trump's campaign slogan for, uh, for his uh, 2020 uh, campaign, and uh, I think it's his 2024 campaign slogan again. I'm not sure how central it is for his uh, 24 campaign. Uh, I'm sorry to say that I am somewhat doubtful, I'm becoming more doubtful all the time that America can ever be great again. Uh, I'm thinking the nation has probably crossed the line before Yahweh Elohim, before El Shaddai, Yahweh Tzabeot, where uh, we have become much like ancient Israel, uh, somewhat, uh, well, not somewhat, but actually condemned and under his curse, under his discipline. Nearly 60 million abortions, I think it's uh, right at 60 million abortions as a nation. Uh, LGBTQ belief system has replaced Yahweh's established biological gender for human beings. Same-sex marriage is the law of our land. National leadership has renounced and denounced biblical gender, biblical marriage, and has uh, publicly and formally supported, supported every form of sexual immorality. Even child pornography is being publicly endorsed. Our nation has, and leadership, our nation, national leadership has engaged in bribery, corruption, and corruption at the highest levels of government, while openly, boldly, and repeatedly telling lies and committed every form of fraud and evil. And that's only the tip of the iceberg of what America has descended into over the last 100 years or so. The church in America has lost its soul as well. The mainstream church in America has not been true to the scriptures for a very long time. But the conservative movement of the evangelical church began its slide into wokeism and departure from the scriptures 25 or 30 years ago as well. Uh, and that slide is pretty much complete now, too. There are only a few smaller portions of the church that are left that have not followed the pattern, who remain committed to the truth, and who continue to faithfully teach and preach the word of Yahweh. It is truly a scriptural remnant that has remained true to the faith. And now the nation has that has support, historically supported the nation of Israel has become a, uh, a hotbed of anti-Semitism, pro-Islamic hatred of all, uh, for all things Jewish and, and Israeli. And as I read and watch what is taking place on our college campuses, university campuses among our young people, I realize that uh, the satanic lie uh, are, is being re believed so completely and so wholesale uh, that it is absolutely unexplainable in any other way than to say that it is supernatural. It's not just occurring here in America. It is happening worldwide. Yahweh is clearing, allowing, clearly allowing the world to be deceived into believing satanic lies. 
I'm becoming more and more concerned each day for America. I can't even imagine that if we were to elect honest leaders and men and women of integrity that they would be able to right the ship of state of America. If Yahweh has condemned and cursed this nation, there is nothing that anyone can do to save it. It may certainly be the case that America is under the curse of Almighty Yahweh. Folks, I believe it is my pastoral responsibility to warn, ourselves, warn us and to exhort us that we must be prepared spiritually for difficult days ahead. I do hope and pray that the rapture of the church will deliver us from any and all severe trials that lie ahead for the world. I have no way of knowing, none of us do, what Yahweh has in mind for us. We do know scripturally that there are difficult days ahead for the world, very difficult days. We simply do not know how many of those difficult days are ahead for the world before the rapture of the church occurs. I do need to remind you that Paul did say in the first verse of 2 Timothy chapter 3 that perilous days are coming. The word Paul used there in that chapter, that verse of chapter th- that first verse of chapter 3, perilous, the Greek word kaleptos, kalepos, uh, is, uh, is the word that uh, is translated perilous, does mean dangerous, does mean violent. And if you study that passage, you realize what, that Paul is saying that as the church age progresses, the closer and the closer the church age gets to the end of that age, the more and more dangerous the more and more perilous, the more and more violent uh, those days will become as the age is growing close to its end. And that's exactly what we see going on right now before our very eyes, right before our own very eyes. Uh, This is the phenomenon that we are watching take place. We can't explain it. It is beyond explanation, but it is here. It is taking place. These are the days that are before us. Uh, in, in, very, in some ways, it is very much like what Paul was uh, talking about as he wrote the, uh, in his own life as he was facing the last days of his own life. Uh, I can assure you, and I um, am delighted to be able to do this, I can assure you that we will be gone from this earth as believers before the tribulation begins. I can tell you with full confidence that the rapture of the church is a pre-tribulation rapture. Uh, We do have clear biblical assurance that the rapture will occur before the tribulation begins. And I am delighted to assure you that that is the case. Here in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 9 through 22, Paul closes his last will and testament, uh, the book of 2 Timothy. The Apostle Paul is facing the end of his own days on earth. He knows it. Uh, He has no idea how much longer uh, it will be until Nero, the crazed Roman emperor, will order his own death. But he knows that uh, he will never be released from the Mamertine prison. Paul expects that the order could come down any time. It probably did come down about six months or so after Paul finished writing the letter of 2 Timothy and sent it off. So what do these last few paragraphs of this last book of Paul's written communication say. Let's look at them. Verses 9 through 15 of 2 Timothy 4 form one paragraph thought. For preaching purposes, I've divided this, as you can see from their sermon outline sheet, into two sections. Verse 9 uh, tells a big part of the story of Paul's life. Uh, It says, be diligent to come quickly. Be diligent to come quickly. 
That's a big deal for the Apostle Paul. First and foremost in Paul's concern is that he wanted and needed Timothy to come. He wanted, he needed his beloved son in the faith to come and to come quickly. He said to Timothy, be diligent about it, Timothy. He wanted and he needed Timothy to make this Timothy's first and foremost priority. And he wanted and needed Timothy to make it his first priority right now. (laughs) He was asking Timothy to get to it. To get to it. Right on it. Right now. Drop whatever you're doing, Timothy. Head for Rome right now. I think that's how be diligent to come quickly should actually be translated. (laughs) And I think that's how Timothy understood it. There weren't many times in Paul's life when he got this kind of personal, when he got this kind of needy and personal desire and allowed that to come through as clearly as it did right here. But it's pretty clear right here. Paul wanted and needed Timothy at his side. (laughs) He loved Timothy. He had had Timothy with him for most of his public ministry. He obviously considered this young fellow his personal son. He, he considered him uh, to be like his own biological son, even though he was not Paul's biological son. And he was asking for Timothy to be there with him here in this part of his letter. There's a reason why it's uh, even more uh, a time of need for Paul uh, than, than just the fact that he's in prison and he's in a dark place in the Mamertine prison. Verse 10 kind of spells that out. It's, it's obviously very uppermost in his mind. It's clearly a painful time for Paul. This fellow Demas has left Paul. We don't know much about Demas. This this fellow has been mentioned in the book of Colossians. He's been mentioned in the book of Philemon. We know that he was part of the inner circle of the Apostle Paul. He was someone who was obviously a a close personal assistant, a, 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 a friend of the Apostle Paul. Uh, He probably wasn't quite as close as Timothy, but this word that Paul uses, translated forsaken, to describe what Demas has done is a painful word. Paul is clearly hurt. He's hurting because of what Demas has done. Demas is obviously a believer. He, he's a Christian. He's a believer, but he's loved this present world, Paul says. He, we don't know exactly what that means, but obviously there has been some earthly pleasure or some earthly person or some earthly lifestyle that Demas has decided he wants or values more than the life of service for Yahweh and He's decided to leave Paul and he's decided to leave the service of Yahweh for whatever it is. And he is headed for Thessalonica. Now we don't know if Thessalonica was his home or it was the place where someone or something that he had found there 
that he wanted more than a life of faithful service for Yahweh. But he's made his choice. And he's headed there for Thessalonica to find it. And Paul is both deeply saddened by this decision for De- of Demas, and he's hurt as well. Of course, we all know this happens in some Christians' lives. There are people who fall away. Not every Christian is willing to stay faithful. Some fall away for a short time and come back. Some fall away and never come back. But it's true. Not all believers remain faithful to the cause of Christ. And Demas was clearly one of those casualties. And Paul was hurting because of Demas. Then Paul mentions Crescens. Crescens has gone to Galatia. Now Crescens wasn't a casualty. Crescens was on some kind of ministry there, but Crescens had left as well. Crescens wasn't there with Paul. We don't know anything more about Crescens. He's only mentioned here in the New Testament. It's not a negative thing. He's apparently on some sort of ministry assignment. Galatia is, you know, in Central Asia Minor, which is now Central Turkey. But Crescens was not any longer with the Apostle Paul. (laughs) Titus was gone as well. Titus, obviously another very faithful servant of Christ and another very faithful one for the Apostle Paul, but he has gone to Dalmatia on some sort of ministry assignment That's quite a distance away, and it's in present-day Central Europe, Hungary, actually. So, obviously, there were trustworthy leaders of the church who were traveling far and wide with the gospel, protecting sound doctrine to the far reaches of the then-known world, and Titus was obviously one of those special trusted servants who were sent to take care of things far away, and so he was another one of those very special people who Paul had to send away on special ministry assignments. And then there's Tychicus. You have to skip down to verse 12 to get to Tychicus. Paul has sent Tychicus to Ephesus. Now, Ephesus is where Timothy was. (laughs) He was the lead guy there in Ephesus. He was the the head bishop there in Ephesus. So I'm not sure how we should understand verse 12 exactly, but Tychicus is a very important fellow. We probably haven't heard of Tychicus. This may be the first time you're hearing of Tychicus. He's actually mentioned five times in the New Testament. There are two places in the New Testament where Tychicus is described this way. Listen. Two places he's described as a beloved brother, a faithful minister, a fellow servant of the Lord. I don't know anybody who's described like that. (laughs) Uh, Paul obviously considered this guy... A pretty special, he's, he's definitely one of the good guys. Uh, so if you've never heard of Tychicus before, you, you need to kind of put him down in your mind as one of the very special good guys. He's probably the guy who actually carried the books of Ephesians and Colossians from Rome when Paul was under house arrest in Rome, and wrote the books of Ephesians and Colossians. Uh, It was almost certainly Tychicus who carried them to Ephesus and to Colossia uh, to be read by the churches there in Ephesus and Colossia. 
Uh, and, uh, and so you may be hearing the name Tychicus for the first time, but you're not hearing about Tychicus for the first time because he was, he was a key figure in New Testament life. And it's probably true. Most, uh, most New Testament scholars believe that it was Tychicus, uh, and they think that's what verse 12 means, is that it was Tychicus who actually carried the letter of 2 Timothy to Ephesus and gave it from Paul to Timothy and then stayed there in Ephesus to replace Timothy while Timothy went to be with Paul in Rome. We don't know that for certain because all Paul actually says is that he sent Tim Tychicus to Ephesus, but uh, that's probably what happened. He, he sent Tych Tychicus with this letter to Ephesus to carry it to Timothy so that Tychicus could replace Timothy so Timothy could come and be with Paul in Rome. Interesting, isn't it? Fascinating stuff. And then there's Luke. <laughs> there's beloved physician Luke. He was still there in Rome with Paul. And, you know, you kind of wonder, wasn't Luke enough? Luke was there with Paul, and it's kind of like Paul is thinking Luke isn't enough. I suspect that there was a great deal of leadership responsibility that Luke was carrying uh, there in Rome. I also suspect that this is probably about the time that Luke was very, very heavily engaged in writing projects, keeping accurate historical records of things for the church. Maybe he was actively involved in traveling and engaged in uh, visiting with various of the apostles that he could that he could be engaged with i suspect that uh luke was uh was writing a great deal his time and his person had to be very carefully protected and watched over so that the history of the church could actually be provided for uh, i also feel quite certain that the apostle paul was very very protective of Luke's safety uh, and uh, trying to keep Luke's person as low profile as possible because Nero was uh, was such a uh, was such a maniac and such an insane person that I'm sure the whole church was trying to keep Luke as low profile as possible. So Paul still wanted. And he still needed his beloved son, Timothy, to be diligent. And he wanted and needed Timothy to come quickly and to make it his priority to be there at Paul's side as much as he was able to possibly be at Paul's side there in Rome. I don't know how much the Romans allowed visitors in the Mamertine prison, but uh, Paul definitely wanted Timothy to come. In addition to all that, <clears throat> I just get the sense that Paul was an incredibly relational man. Uh, he had grown deeply accustomed to having these wonderful young men at his side in his ministry throughout his many years of faithful ministry. Uh, he was a strong man himself, obviously. He was a very strong servant of Christ. But I, I suspect, and I get the impression, that he had also become highly dependent on these young men who supported him uh, and gave him a great deal of encouragement and physical support and help throughout his entire public ministry. And I just think he had come to depend a great deal on people like Timothy uh, to be with him during his life of ministry. 
So he was lonely. And I think this is a, a, just a very personal uh, time of insight into the, the man, the apostle Paul. Now we come to verse 13. And I do love this verse. It warms my heart. It really does. This is the verse of a man that I really, I really like. So first of all, <clears throat> Paul wants Timothy to bring Mark along with him to Rome. Now who's Mark? Well, Mark's the, the author of Mark's Gospel. That's John Mark. And he wants to bring him to bring Mark with him. And I, I just absolutely love this. John Mark is the guy that uh, he was Barnabas's nephew. Uh, so, and he was the guy that abandoned uh, Paul and Barnabas on the first missionary journey. They hadn't gone very far <laughs> on the first missionary journey. They had taken John Mark with them and... Uh, he was just a teenager. He was young. He was irresponsible. He was, he was immature. And for whatever his reason, he couldn't hack it. And he ran home to Mama, Barnabas' sister. Uh, and Paul was absolutely incensed with him. Uh, he, he, he couldn't forgive him. He, he couldn't stand the fact that uh, Mark had done this major failing. Uh, and... Um, he actually, Paul and Barnabas had a major falling out over the fact that John Mark had, uh, had gone home and hadn't stayed with the stuff. Uh, and uh, and uh, it ended up that Paul and Barnabas parted ways in ministry over the fact that John Mark, Barnabas' nephew, had left them in the lurch uh, at on the first missionary journey. Paul had to take a, a different ministry partner. He got Silas for his second min missionary journey. Barnabas had a new ministry direction. He went to Cyprus. Uh, obviously, years later, uh, Barnabas and Paul reconciled, uh, and obviously, at this point, at some point, Paul and Mark had completely reconciled, and now Paul is asking Timothy, Timothy to bring Mark with him because he has use for Mark in ministry there in Rome. And uh, it's, it's just a beautiful testimony to the way godly men uh, no longer let old quarrels and issues make issue in their lives, and they are working together for the cause of Christ. They've settled these old things that, that, don't, that don't matter anymore, and uh, they're, just, they're just godly men who take care of things like that, and they don't make an issue in their lives anymore. And I just love that. I just love that because, uh, because that's a, a beautiful part of the story of Paul's life. Then uh, Paul, the rest of this is that Paul requests that Timothy uh, stop along the way uh, to Rome uh, at Troas, and uh, he has left some things with this guy named Crispus. Uh, and what he has left with Crispus is a, a cloak, obviously some heavy coat type thing, uh, and he's left books and parchments, especially parchments, with Crispus. And he asks specifically that uh, Timothy would bring the cloak and the books, and especially that he would bring the parchments. Now, it is autumn of 19, or uh, not 19, it is autumn of 67 uh, A.D., when Paul wrote this letter. So uh, winter is on its way. And remember, Paul is in the Mamertine prison. Now the Mamertine prison is uh, 
nothing more. I've never been there. I would, I would have loved to visit the Mamertine prison sometime, but I doubt I will ever uh, get to Rome now, but uh, might, in the, might in the millennial kingdom, I don't know. Anyway, uh, it's, it's nothing more than a, than a deep hole in the ground. It's a cave uh, just down under, under the, the streets of Rome. Uh, it's, a, it's a huge cav- cavern under the street, under the, the surface of Rome. It's always damp. It's always cold. Uh, and that's where Paul was being held in prison. It's just literally a hole in the ground. So Paul was almost certainly constantly cold. And that was autumn, so uh, winter was coming, and he was obviously anticipating being even more cold. And uh, he was looking forward to having his cloak. He needed the cloak. So come quickly, Timothy, please bring my cloak. Uh, And then he was also looking forward to having the books, but especially the parchments. Now, I don't know what kind of conditions Paul had down there in the cavern in the ground, but he probably had some candlelight. Uh, there, were, there were probably some little fires that, uh, that, were, that were down there in the, in the cavern, in the, in the prison. So if he had something to read down there, and if he had that cloak uh, to, to kind of wrap around him, and uh, oh, what a wonderful way of passing those long, lonely hours it would be if he could have something to read. The books would have been some kind of writings of the masters, but the parchments. The parchments would almost almost certainly have been copies of the Scriptures. Almost certainly the parchments would have been scrolls of... Uh, maybe Torah scrolls, maybe Isaiah scrolls, who knows how much of the Old Testament uh, the Apostle Paul would have been able to acquire. But the parchments, I'm almost certain, would have been some copies of the Old Testament. And he was asking Timothy, please, Timothy, if you can possibly do so quickly, Get me my cloak and those books, but especially, I'd love to have (laughs) those parchments so I could be reading the scriptures in those last days that I have of life here on this earth. Man after my heart, just love the things that Paul wanted there. All right, timeless truth. This is what I, uh, this is what I wrote for timeless truth. The apostle Paul writes his son to his son in the faith, Timothy, asking him to be diligent to come quickly. Paul wants and needs Timothy at his side. He feels alone. He needs his cloak and his books and his parchments. This great man of Yahweh needs human help and companionship, a warm cloak, coat, and some reading materials to help pass along only hours in the damp, drafty prison. Living lesson. There come times in life when it is right and good to simply ask for help. Yahweh knows our needs. And sometimes it is his plan that other people are his means to meet the needs of his children. In Paul's case, Timothy was the means that Yahweh was going to use to meet Paul's most basic needs at this crucial time in these last days of his life on earth. Who knows? But that you may be Yahweh's answer to someone else's needs today. Amen? Amen. 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 Oh, Father in heaven, 
We thank you that you are such a wonderful Father. We thank you that you do take care of so many of our needs and you are such a generous, generous Father who gives so many good and perfect gifts. But we know that sometimes you use other people to also be the means by which you give us wonderful gifts. But above all, Lord, we thank you for the greatest and most glorious gift of all, the gift of eternal life that you have given to each and every one of us who have simply believed you and your promise to give it to us. Whoever believes in you will not perish, but have everlasting life. We never cease to thank you for the gift of everlasting life. Help us to be generous in sharing the truth about your gift of everlasting life with everyone that we can so that more and more people may come to faith in Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I'm glad to have you here with us today. Uh, we certainly are here to praise and adore our great creator God. <clears throat> uh, we want to give you uh, many thanks to those of you who support our ministry. Uh, financially, we uh, just really, really can do a lot because of your great and tremendous support. Um, <clears throat> please continue to do that. Uh, and if you want to give to our ministry, just uh, make out your checks and drop them in that black box hanging on the wall, and we will take care of those things. Uh, <clears throat> we do have prayer at, on Tuesday evening at 6 o'clock. Uh, please send your prayer requests to prayer at truthfellowshiplive.com, or you can text them to me uh, directly. Uh, do continue to pray for the unity of our church as we go through these difficult times, and I think we're going to enter even more and more difficult times. Um, I, th I still think North Dakota is the place to be <laughs> as, as everything unfurls uh, and our, our country goes in the direction it's going. <clears throat> Ron asked me to make an announcement uh, for all teachers. There will be an all-teachers meeting May 22nd, that is a Wednesday, at 5.30. That's the only time he can do it. So uh, teachers, uh, please come. There will be some changes as we go into our summer schedule. So you will want to come and be made aware of those, those things. So May 22nd, 5.30, please take, make a note of that. We're going to do something a little different today. Uh, in between our two worship songs in the next set, uh, we're going to take uh, kind of a group picture uh, and send it off to Amir Safari <coughs> and uh, in support of Israel. So if you uh, want to be a part of that picture, we're going to uh, have you all come up onto the stage and we're going to set up very quickly, hold the flag, take the picture, go back and have another song. So it'll be in between those two songs. So we want to get that done fairly quickly. So if you want to participate, just pop on over this way. I don't know what I'm How do you like that? I could actually send an SOS. <laughs> I won't move. If I don't move, I will be perfect, right? Okay, is that better? <laughs> That's really something. Well, we just bought about three or four new ones of these, so I'll fish that out. So we just bought a few more of these, so we'll swap that out. But we'll do that group picture. Uh, please hurry up. Kids are invited to be up here, and uh, we're going to have whoever stands in the very front hold the flag of Israel. Uh, we'll take a quick picture. And Rhonda's going to do that. She'll give you instructions pretty quickly uh, when, when she's ready to do that.
So be prepared for that. This Saturday, May 11th, we're going to have our TFL spring cleanup. Uh, please come if you can. It's going to be from about 8 o'clock till noon. Uh, whatever kind of job you like doing in the yard, bring those tools, and I'll bring enough that uh, you won't run out of work to do uh, for that time. We've already mowed the lawn once, so that's been mowed, but we've got some edging to do and some trimming and things like that along the fence. So uh, there, there's work to be done, some painting to be done. So um, come ready to do some work. Uh, <clears throat> May 19th, we're going to have our budget reveal. Uh, we're just going to, the stewardship committee wants to present the budget that we've been working on. And so we're going to do that after the service on May 19th. It won't be a long, drawn out meeting. It'll be very quick. And uh, we'll deal with your questions if you have them. And, uh, and get that over with and, and be done. Everyone's invited to come to that. Uh, we don't uh, hold any of our budgeting things secret, so please do come. You may have seen a few signs across the uh, around the church of pray and stand with Israel. Uh, during our May, our, uh, May 19th service, uh, we will dedicate time to pray for Israel's peace, prosperity, and protection. Uh, <clears throat> please plan to come to that service. Uh, again, it'll just be a, a short video and, and some time of prayer for Israel. Women are planning a Seek and Peak Women's Fun Day at TFL. That's May 25th, starting at 1. Uh, they've got some plans uh, laid out. Uh, you'll want to participate if you can, women. Um, there's going to be a scavenger hunt. That would be kind of fun. Uh, don't you go find stuff from other people in the neighborhood for a scavenger hunt? <laughs> Maybe they're going to hide things. <laughs> It'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. Uh, you can see uh, Linda Weldon or Rhonda for more details on that. Our volunteer schedules are available on the back table. Please look at those. Make sure that you have somebody covering for you if you can't make your assignment. Vacation Bible School is going to start uh, September or June 2nd, uh, and so that's coming up, June 2nd, uh, just a, a month away, and uh, we're, we're coming down. I noticed the nice little table, and went, from the time I got here this morning until I walked back past it, it changed. <laughs> you just keep adding to it, huh? <laughs> well, it looks nice. So come out there. There is a, they're asking for some financial donations to help buy stuff. I think just prizes and. Is there some other things? Uh, tin cans for Phyllis's booth and. Are those yeah, a, there's, they're out there, so you. Oh, can, that's out there. Yep. Okay, so there there are other ways that you can donate things. Tin cans. Uh, that'll be good. So that'll be fun. We, you know, after BBS, we could tie those all together and hang them on the back of Dana's car. <laughs> <laughs> We've done that for a while. <laughs> You, you guys would be okay with that, right? I'm fine with it. <laughs> I'm not sure what you'll think of it. <laughs> so, uh, VBS, June 2nd to the 5th from 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, please, please come uh, and volunteer. We still need help. So, talk to Jody or Rita to help. You can look at the bulletin for other details. Uh, Psalm 5, 11 to 12 says... But let all the, those rejoice who put their trust in you. <coughs> let them ever shout for joy because you defend them. Let those also who love your name be joyful in you. For you, O Yahweh, will bless the righteous. With favor will surround him as with a shield. And that's where we live today. God will shield us as well. Let's pray. Lord God, we are so thankful that uh, we can meet together uh, today. And Lord, as we go through this service, help us to keep our focus fully on you and to give you praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.